Welcome to the Root of Power podcast, where I teach you how to chase your joy, find alignment, and create a life and a business that you love using actionable methods, interviews, and inspiring stories from people who know that true freedom is found within. I'm your host, your always hype woman and sometimes ass kicker, Amanda Chills, and I am so proud of you for choosing to step into your power. Come along, we've got dreams to build. Okay, my love, I have put everything that I offer for free on one page so that we are not doing more work than we have to because why would we do that? Hashtag work smarter, not harder. So livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. You are going to find everything I've created for not only leveling up in your personal life and building a life that you love, but leveling up in your business life and building a business that you love. Okay livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. Love you. Hello. (laughs) I hope you are having a beautiful day. I got requested, got requested. I got a request to do a podcast episode on using movement to support mental health. Um, So here we are doing the thing. We love requests. If you were like, Amanda, please cover this topic. Like mm, mm, mm. requests feel like eating chocolate. They feel like eating chocolate. So if you have requests, just shoot me a message on Instagram at Amanda underscore chills. I would love to give you exactly what you want. Hashtag daddy. Does that make me a podcast daddy? We love that. Hashtag podcast daddy. Um, So if you have a request, please let me know. I would, again, I would love to give you what you want. That's the whole point. Um, So using movement to support mental health. So they are a fitness coach. They're a strength coach. And a lot of people in my experience will enter um, healing through a few doors, right? They'll either enter through like personal development. They'll find people like Jen Sincero who wrote You Are a Badass, which if you have not read that book, we fucking love that book. They'll find like a life coach. Um, They'll get into like Tony Robbins, Joe Dispenza, people like that. Although I stay far away from Tony Robbins. Um, That's a story for another time. They'll get into growth and healing and personal development through the gym. That is an avenue that many people enter through. They'll start with therapy. um, They'll start with journaling, things like that. So those are probably like the avenues that I see the most often is those. Um, What happens is if people don't understand the difference between like really digging the rot out of your system, really healing trauma and doing workouts in the gym is that they'll start to see things like the gym is my therapy and it's fucking not friends. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. I will die on this hill. The gym is not therapy. A personal development book is not therapy. Yoga is not therapy. Meditation is not therapy. Not that everyone on the planet needs therapy, but those modalities are not specifically built to heal trauma. They're completely different, completely different. It's like saying, uh, it's like chopping down a tree with a plunger. A plunger is not made to chop down a tree. It's made to plunge something. Just like an ax is not made to plunge a toilet. It doesn't make sense. You're using the wrong tool. And then people will get lost in this modality, working out, yoga, personal development, whatever, instead of actually doing the thing that's going to work. If you want to chop down a tree, you can't, I mean, you could use a plunger, I guess. You're literally never going to chop down a tree. Just like you're never going to heal if you don't use the correct modality. So use a trauma-specific modality. Again, therapy is not the only way, but it is one of the best, most effective ways. So if you are... Working on mental health, if you are wanting to heal, and not just trauma, anxiety, depression, same thing, right? Like, make sure that you're using something that actually works for that thing. Now, does that mean that working out, movement, nutrition, meditation, yoga, personal development doesn't work at all? No, uh, everything works together. Like, humans 
our our essentially spider webs. Our brain works in a spider web. If you've ever seen a picture of like neurons, it looks like a spider web. It's an extremely intricate interconnected system. Our bodies are the same way. They're so intricate. They're so well designed. Everything works together. Everything impacts everything else. So I have a lot of clients who come to me who like have no movement practice, who don't take care of their nutrition, who eat shit on the regular, um, who sleep like garbage, who have people in their life who are garbage, who work jobs they hate. Like it's all connected, right? It doesn't really matter which room you, which door you enter through. They're all leading to the same room of healing and growth and thriving. But this episode is specific to using movement to support mental health. And you may be like, Amanda, uh, you, you don't do movement. Like, well, friends, let me give you a story. So when I was first in college, I wanted to be a history professor, um, because I love humans and I have always loved humans and history is the story of humans. Right. So I wanted to do that. And then I was like, okay, that's not the vibe. Um, so I switched to exercise science. So my undergrad is actually in exercise science, which is the body, how it moves, essentially what you would do to do like athletic training or physical therapy. Um, those kind of professions, except there was a 0% chance your girl was taking organic chemistry. So I did not do that because I'd rather eat bees. I don't want to hurt bees though. I'd rather eat wasps. Fuck those guys. Um, so my undergrad is in exercise science and because mental health is part of the body, right? Your brain is a muscle. It's part of your body. I actually do a ton of work around physical health. Um, and if you talk to any fitness coach, if you are a fitness coach, you know, good and damn well that you probably spend a significant amount of time talking to your clients about mental health, about supporting their mental health through movement. So they are so, so, so interconnected. So how do we use movement to support mental health and why does it even matter, right? I'm sure you've heard the cliche of like, oh, you know, (laughs) exercising gives you endorphins and they make you happy and happy people just don't kill their husbands, right? Like, thank you Legally Blonde for laying it out in the most succinct way. When you work out, you get endorphins, endorphins make you happy, happy people just don't kill their husbands. Elwood said it, it's finalized. Um, but it is very cliche where people are like, you know, I'm, I feel anxious. I feel depressed. I have trauma. And people are like, well, have you tried yoga? And it's like, people get mad about that, but there's a reason that it exists. Movement supports your mental health. Movement supports your overall health. Human bodies are made to move. And in this modern era, we move probably the least amount throughout human history. We sit in chairs, we live in boxes, we're not nomadic anymore. I mean, if you look at nomad societies and how much they move versus like Americans, it's vastly different. So if you don't have a job where you're regularly moving and you're not prioritizing that, that's a problem. What happens to things that don't move that are supposed to? They get stiff, they get weak, they get brittle. It's not good. So when I have people come to me and they have no movement pattern, it's maybe not the first thing that we look at, but it absolutely is something that we work on over time. Because if your brain is stuck and we're working on your brain, we also absolutely need to work through the body. They're connected. So we're not just working through the brain, we're working through the body as well. And as we start releasing stuckness, well, it's got to move through, right? So if you have um, like a lake and the lake dredges something up, like there's a car buried in the lake and it dredges something up, it's just going to sit in the lake. But if it's in a river, it's going to move through. So that's the goal is that the movement helps you move through whatever you're moving through. And mental health has a really, really interesting impact on the body. So from what I've seen, and there's a ton of research to support this, They have looked at posture in people who self-report mental health. So people with depression tend to cave, right? If you ever look at someone who's sad, it looks like they're caving. They'll, They'll like immediately protect by going within, by withdrawing, by turning their shoulders in. So how many people, their 
mental health, their depression, their trauma, their anxiety impacts their body. Well, that's a hundred percent of people because we live in our bodies and things manifest as. So you can tell when people start to get better because they sit differently, they move differently. Like I can watch people over time from when we first started walk, working together to the end of our time together, they quite literally feel different. Their energy completely shifts. They walk differently. They sit differently. They carry themselves differently because what does depression do? It causes you to cave in. What does anxiety do? It causes you to brace. It causes you to always be bracing. Essentially, what does trauma do? It causes you to brace because the hallmark of trauma is that everything is a threat. The hallmark of anxiety is everything is a threat. The hallmark of depression is everything breaks you down. So those manifest in the body. And you may be like, Amanda, you're talking so much about posture and all these things. Like I had no idea they were connected. Well, that's exactly the reason for this podcast. And you're going to start noticing it in people. So in people with trauma as well, the way that they walk is very disconnected from their body. And as we heal their trauma, as they get better and start to integrate what happened to them, they walk differently because they're more connected to their body. They can literally live in their body now, which is one of the most beautiful things. So using movement to support your overall health, your mental health, I'll give you some things that it does. It literally reduces stress. Your body, our body is meant to move. So if it doesn't move all the time, or at least often, or there's no intentional movement, your body stress the fuck out. <laughs> Here, we're supposed to move. We're supposed to get into multiple positions, move through multiple planes of movement, not just walking back and forth sideways at an angle. Like you hear those people that go to like start their lawnmower and throw their back out. That's because they're not moving through multiple planes of movement. Their joints are stiff. And what happens to things like you've had, um, like a door that you haven't opened in a long time and you open it and it creaks like hell, it's because there's no regular movement. So a lot of stress in the in your life can be mitigated with an intentional movement practice because when you're moving, you're also moving through and helping your body move through whatever's coming up. So it literally reduces stress. You know this, I know this, it's well-versed in literature. One of the beautiful things about a movement practice is it drops you into your body. So anxiety disconnects you from your body. Depression disconnects you from your body. Trauma absolutely disconnects you from your body. People who live in their heads all day are not in their bodies. And then they say, oh, I'm disassociating all the time. I don't feel like I'm in my life. I can't get out of my head. I'm just in my thoughts all day long. My brain won't stop. Yeah, that's because you're not in your body. That's a huge part of the problem. And then your brain thinks, oh God, where's my body? I must have been decapitated. This is fucked. I better be worried. So then you have double the worry because now your brain thinks you've been decapitated because you're not in your body. So movement supports your mental health by dropping you in your body. If you're not in your body for long enough, your body will force you to be in your body. This is where panic attacks come from. This is where anxiety attacks come from. I use those interchangeably. Very often, no, but not literally every time when I have someone tell me, oh, I'm having a panic attack, I take a Xanax, I take a Clonopin to stop it. And I say, stop doing that. Stop doing that. Move through your panic attack. You're not going to literally die. You just think you're going to die. That's not the same thing. But what happens is your body is forcing you to feel your body, to release pressure that's been stored. Well, how can you also release pressure? Moving, yoga, hiking, walking, biking, lifting weights, pole dancing, dancing, swimming. Who gives a shit what you do? Find something you like to do in movement and go do it. If you don't, your body will force you to be in your body because it's we're meant to live in our bodies. They're the greatest wealth of information. So if you're up in your head all day and you're a person who has panic attacks, move more, move more, intentionally drop into your body. And you may say, well, I don't like what comes up when I drop into my body. Well, the cure for the pain is in the pain, my sweet baby angel. Being in your body solves the vast majority of those problems, like 70% of them. Now, learning to be in your body is a process, but being in your body, the more you are embodied, 
the easier life is quite literally and the better that you feel. So it drops you into your body, which is one of the fastest, most potent ways to heal anxiety, depression, and trauma, because the more you live in your body, the safer you are. That's the message that your brain and your body get. So there's that. Um, it literally gives you something to do. So one of the hallmarks of depression, right, is that people are like, well, I just don't feel like doing anything. I just lay in bed all day and I scroll TikTok and like that doesn't give you a fucking complex. That's a huge problem. So a lot of people, a lot of adults really struggle to do anything outside of their job. Um, if they have children, obviously like that's something that they're doing, they're raising kids. So they're typically like, when people have too much time on their hands, it makes them neurotic as fuck. It's a problem. There's a reason that the saying, the idle hands are the devil's playground, that's because too much free time is a huge problem. So if the only thing you're doing is going to work and then going home or going to work and taking care of your kids and going home and you're not doing anything else, yeah, I can see why you feel depressed. Um, you need something to do. Movement gives you something to do, something to work towards. Perhaps there's other people involved if you do a class um, or if you are part of a community, but it gives you something to do, which breaks up routine, which anchors you in your time and your life. Part of anxiety and depression and trauma is that you lose time because you're missing the anchors. Movement, working out, whatever, gives you something to do. It also anchors time. If you know that your, your uh, pole dancing class is Wednesdays at six o'clock, then it anchors time for you, which is beautiful. And it removes all of this free time that gives you opportunities to be in your head and get wrapped up and be neurotic. Movement also creates momentum. So there's a lot of times where people and clients feel like they can't do the thing the full way. And I say, just start. Just start doing the thing. Get started. Do it for two minutes and maybe you continue and maybe you don't, but it's a much higher chance that you do continue. So movement creates momentum. We can work through the body or we can work through the brain, but it's most potent when we work through both. So the more you're moving, the more your brain is also unstuck. So when I was working at a therapeutic riding barn in um, Odessa and then the one in North Carolina, I was working with a pediatric physical therapist and they were educating me that one of the reasons, so therapeutic riding is where um, children and adults with disabilities ride a horse as part of their therapy. And the reason for that is that horses and pigs, interestingly enough, but it's a little harder to ride a pig than a horse. um, Horses movement, when you ride a horse It moves your pelvis in the same way as if you are walking because it moves your pelvis in a three-dimensional way, meaning it goes like, if you're looking straight at a pelvis, it goes side to side. So one side of the hip will come forward. The other side goes backwards. They go up and down. Um, So one, like the right side goes up, the left side goes up like a seesaw, and it moves it in a figure eight. So that is very unique. And what happens when kids don't learn to walk, when they don't start walking at like the normal age window where kids start walking, is their brain development also is behind because your brain development and your movement are so intertwined. So for people that don't move enough, your brain literally stops developing. Everything gets stuck. So while we can work on the brain in therapy, if we're not also working on the body, you can only ever do so much. So movement creates momentum. It literally develops your whole system. The brain knows to develop based on what stage of movement you're in. And the body knows to develop based on what stage your brain is in. They're all linked. So movement creates hella momentum, which leads us into our next one. Stiff body, stiff mind. So you, I'm sure you know people who like never change their mind. Now, are there people who move a lot who never change their mind? Yeah, sure. Obviously, like this isn't a hundred percent true, but in general, stiff body, stiff mind. The more that you move, the more that you move. So fluidity begets fluidity. It literally improves your mood, right? We know this. Exercise causes endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people just don't kill their husbands. So 
when people say like, oh, do yoga, do movement, go lift weights, go get in the gym, you'll feel better. Like that's literally true. That's literally true. It helps with feeling accomplished, proving that you can do hard things, proving that you can make progress, setting and hitting goals. I think another beautiful one is, is you're a beginner. You have a learner's mindset again. So if you first start lifting weights, you're not going to be super good, right? You just started. If I took a pole dancing class, I would suck. Like it would be so bad. Um, if I learned archery, I would be terrible at it at first. I actually am quite bad at archery. I think I've tried it like twice um, because I, I don't do it very often. So it helps you be a beginner mindset. You get better at things. You prove to yourself that if you set a goal, you can hit it. It gives you something to work towards. It's beautiful. It literally gets you out of the house unless you have a home gym. So you're talking to more people. You're meeting people who are probably interested in the same thing you're interested in because you're in the same area doing the same thing, which is beautiful. So we have more interaction of people that are like us. And then you can build relationships, which helps so much and all of those things. It likes it, it likes Lee. Oh, Amanda, we're thriving today. It likes, God, Christ, it likely... <laughs> gets you outside. There's a ton of run clubs. There's archery clubs. There's hiking. There's swimming. There's paddle boarding. There's surfing. There's wakeboarding, whatever, right? Like if you leave your house and get in your car and go to a gym, you're still getting outside more. Most people spend one hour, less than an hour a day outside, which is extremely detrimental to our system. So you're outside more, which has huge benefits on your circadian rhythm, on your mood, on your vitamin D, which then supports your mood and your ability to make neurotransmitters, all of those things. You get literally more blood flow. When you have more blood flowing, you have more repair and better functioning because your system is faster at clearing out what would be beneficial to clear and bringing oxygen and nutrients to your muscles because you're moving more which means blood is flowing more, which means your system is better at repair and cleaning and functioning, which is beautiful. It helps give you a sense of control and mastery. Like again, if you're setting goals and hitting them, you're building self-confidence because what is confidence? The ability to hit a goal. That's it. If you want to be more confident, be more successful, which means hit what you aim at. So naturally when people start a new thing, they set goals. Even if you don't intentionally set them, you think I want to be better at this. So then you get better at it. And then you're like, damn, I'm good at getting better at things. And that becomes confidence. All of these things are ways that movement supports your mental health. So if you're like, oh, damn, I feel called out. Okay. We love you anyway. Me and all my personalities. <laughs> and Kitty, who's currently taking a nap on my lap during this episode. Um, move more. Pick anything you enjoy. Or anything that sounds like you won't hate it. If you're like, I don't know what I enjoy. Pick anything that sounds like you won't hate it and try it. If you hate it, find something else. If you like it, keep doing. There are so many opportunities. And if you're someone who in the past has struggled to make friends or build relationships, movement is a great way. Doing martial arts a run club, a walk club, there's hiking meetups. You'll find people that you vibe with because you'll be in the same place doing the same things, which means you at least have something in common. And most relationships are built on, hey, me too, which is beautiful. So there we go. Um, tell me how you feel about these. I love when I get people who reach out. If I missed one, tell me what your experience has been like with movement and how it's pulled you out of Whatever it's pulled you out of, it's so powerful. And again, the body is so intricate and so interrelated that there's no downside to movement unless you're someone who says the gym is my therapy, in which case, no, it's not. It's literally not therapy. Love you though. Okay. Have a beautiful day. Go move. Pick anything. Pick anything. Move. Do some things. You'll feel better. I promise. I promise you, you'll feel better. That is a promise that I can keep and hold. You will feel better. Okay, friends. Go do it. Love you. Bye.